Hey everybody, let's talk about the step response of a parallel RLC circuit. So let me backtrack a little bit and then let's say we analyze the natural response. So that's when this current source has been connected for a long time and then we suddenly short it out, so then disconnecting it. So then what happens is right there's, so this is gone. So you just do KCL of these three circuit elements. So there's, so this is for the natural response. So then there will be current for the capacitor, current for the resistor, current for the inductor, and then that's it. For the step response, I'll just put over here where there's space, then this would be connected. So then when we do KCL, there will be four of these elements, right? There's current for the capacitor, for the resistor, for the inductor, and then this was going this way. So that'll actually be minus. Okay, and uh, let me just move this to the other side of the equation. So it looks like this, right? So the current for the natural response, KCL, looks like this. For the step response, looks like this. The only difference right here, right? That's the only difference. Okay, but now, how do we solve? So, I mean, for the current through capacitor, looks like C, dV, dt. For a resistor, V over R. For an inductor, I'm not sure. I know that the voltage for an inductor looks like this. So if we want the current, we can divide both sides by L, right? And then move DT over here like this, and then integrate like this. So this turns into I minus I naught. Right, and then move the, this is the initial current, right? move it on this side of the equation. So then it looks like this. So this current is all of this right here. So the I, not the initial current, plus one over L integral V dt. Okay, so then I, I would like to not have this integral over here. So the trick is we take a time derivative of the entire equation. So then this turns into C D squared, right? The second derivative. And then this is DV DT. The time derivative of a constant is zero. And then the derivative of an integral, those are inverses, right? V. Okay, and then let's get rid of this coefficient here. So divide everything by C. Okay, and then you see this one over RC. Let me factor a two out of there, like this, two and then two. Okay, and then look, one over two RC, I'll call that alpha. One over LC, I'll replace that with omega naught squared. This is the Nieper frequency. Omega naught is the undamped natural frequency, which leaves us with, I'm gonna do the shorthand notation for the derivative, V double dot plus two alpha V dot plus omega naught squared V equals zero. Okay, so for the natural response, we have a homogeneous second order ODE. Homogeneous because this is zero. All right, to the step response, for the capacitor, C, dV, dt. For the resistor, V over R. For the inductor, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Okay, now, um, I wrote it earlier, but then I erased it. Okay, for the, uh, for the inductor, voltage looks like this, right? For the inductor. So meaning this current over here. Okay, now take a look at this. If we take a derivative, it's like this. D squared I by DT squared. Now take a look over here. See, V can go right there. 
dv dt can go right here. Okay, so let me substitute those in. Okay, so c dv dt, which is this, so that's l d squared dt squared, like this. Now v is this, so plus l over r di dt. And I'll just leave this alone. Okay, now let me divide, see this LC? I'm gonna divide everything by LC. So divide by LC, so this goes away. L over R turns into one over RC. And then divide, let me make some more space over here. One over LC. 1 over LC. Okay, and you see right here, let me factor 2 like this. And look, 1 over 2 RC, just like over here, is our Nieper frequency, alpha. 1 over LC, omega naught squared is that. Okay, and then same over here. So then, what do we have? We have I double dot plus two alpha i dot plus omega naught squared i equals omega naught squared i. Okay. So now take a look at what we have here. It is a second order ODE, kind of like this one. But this time, this side is not zero. So this is a non-homogeneous second order ODE because of this term right here being non-zero. And what's the difference? Just this is letter V, right? This is letter I. Otherwise, it's the exact same form of a second order ODE. The only difference is this one is non-homogeneous, okay? And note that this one is in terms of voltage, this one is in terms of current. Now, let's deal with this. I'll show you a trick. Remember this trick forever. We can move this term on this side. Okay, so like this. Um, so you'll often see uh, like the letter I already has a dot, right? And then if you have I, dot like this means didt and i double dot is d square i by dt squared second derivative and this is how you'll often see it in a book but if you feel like sometimes i write kind of messy so it's hard to see dot i lowercase i with a dot so you could if you want like write capital i like this Right, that's not like, there's no rule that says you have to use lowercase i. You can use whatever letter you want, right? And this, this current is the one that was over here. Okay, so you could use uppercase i if you want, just so if it looks nicer to you instead of lowercase i. So that's okay. Um, all right, back to the trick. Let's move this on this side of the equation. So, omega naught squared I L minus omega naught squared I. So you can already see how, look, you can factor like this. And now let's do U substitution right here. Let u equals, so this is the variable and this is the constant. What is u dot? I L dot, what's the time derivative of a constant? Zero. Take one more derivative. Right, and now look, substitute these here and then what do you get? You get this, u double dot, u dot, u, Look, 
if you do the substitution. We have now a homogeneous second order ODE that looks exactly the same form as this one. So everything you learned previously in the previous videos when we did the natural response of the parallel RLC, remember you have the characteristic equation and then it will be undamped, overdamped, or critically damped depending on whether or not alpha is less than omega, alpha is equal to omega, or alpha is greater than omega, right? And then there are different solutions for each of those scenarios. It's the same thing. The only difference is you have, when you're done, right? So whatever solution you have, for example, let's say it's overdamped. And then u of t is like this. So something that looks like this. So it looks something like this. But then this is in terms of u, we need to go back to i, right? So when you go back, i l is u plus this one. So now that when we change this back, it'll look more like plus i. That's it. That's the only difference. Right? So if it were the natural response, it would look like this. And then when you do the step response, there's just one extra term right here. That's it. Okay, and then you still have to go through to figure out the coefficients. So you can review the previous videos about how to solve for those coefficients. I'll just tell you right now is you go at t equal to zero, right? And then you go di dt at t equal to zero, right? And then this is two equations to solve for two unknowns. That's how you do it. And it would require that you know the initial conditions. You would need to know i at t equal to zero. That would have to be provided to you. And you see this right here? I'll just rewrite it. We're over here next to it. I'll just rewrite it over here. And I'll use this letter, right? So at i equal to zero, this would be v at zero. And then I'll move the L on the side. All right, so look, this has to be provided and this has to be provided. So this goes to solve this equation. And if you know this, V, the voltage at t equal to zero, divided by L is exactly this. Okay, so again, you would need to be given the initial current and the initial voltage at t equal to zero. Okay, so give this a try. Let me know if you have questions. And then next we'll move on to the series RLC natural response and step response. And just for a visual, let's say, just real quick, like say the, as a function of time, this current looks, for example, starts at zero. The initial current is zero. And then the step, this value over here is given, and let's say it's over here. What does an underdamped response look like? It looks like this, underdamped. Critically damped looks, say, like this. Okay, critically damped. And then overdamped looks like this. It's still exponential, it just takes longer to settle. Okay, so that's it. And now imagine whatever voltage it is, now it's sitting there for a long time, and then you do a natural response. So then now it wants to go down to zero, right? Then the underdamped response will be more like this, and 
the critically damped response like this and the over damped response like that. It just takes longer to settle. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. All right, so give some of these problems a try and let me know if you have questions. I'll see you in the next video.